Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today I wanted to walk you through looting. So, if you're unfamiliar with the topic, looting is essentially finding items out in the verse and making them yours. Kind of finders keepers. Now, this could be accomplished via a few means. The most hostile way to do this is to kill a player and take their items, but it can be more passive, such as searching locations and finding boxes. So, let's start on that passive side, because there are boxes that are able to be searched pretty much anywhere. You know, if you're doing a box mission or cargo or even without a mission, you can still go to locations and find boxes that can be opened. The thing that you're really looking for is a box that can be opened. So if you've been to places that have boxes and random crap on shelves, like in aid shelters, then you know what traditional boxes look like. But when you are trying to find things with latches or things that look like case style boxes, then you know you can search them for loot. A lot of times you'll see like ammo container looking boxes that have a variety of items in there. The other option is just to kind of wander around and look for things that look a little bit out of place and hold F to see if you get the interaction outline around a box, which if you do, you'll know that you found a box that you're looking for. That being said, you can't count on every location having boxes to find goods. So it's best to just hit some of the hot spots like Security Post Korea, or just look as you're out doing things in the verse. You're also not restricted to looking for just boxes to loot because you're also able to look at corpses, hit loot, and see what they have in their inventory. Now, regardless of box or corpse, the process is essentially the same. You hit loot, it pulls up your inventory, and you evaluate what's in place and if it's in your interest to take those items along with you. There's things like pistols and med guns and fruits and med pens and ammo clips and utility items and long arms and even some pretty rare items. Um, some things I've found are some knives that I haven't really seen anywhere else, along with rare or uncommon armor sets. And what I've seen rumored but not yet confirmed via anybody actually finding one is apparently a Xi'an rocket launcher. Now, what I have seen confirmed is that there's a rifle that's supposed to be exclusively in Squadron 42 that they've snuck into the, the universe, and it's a version of the P8, and I've personally found ammo for that weapon, just not the gun itself. That one is a little bit interesting because I don't think they actually sell ammo for it anywhere, so you'll need to scavenge it from loot boxes if you plan on keeping running with it, and that probably applies to the Xi'an rocket launcher if that's more than just a myth. So that's the more passive looting, but the way to get more items in a quicker time frame is to do bunker missions, either the security contract or evaluation style or the traditional bunker missions, and honestly I think caves are probably a good spot for that as well, but the idea here is really that you're going somewhere that is going to spawn a lot of NPCs that you can then kill, and upon completing the mission, you then have the boxes on site to rummage through, but additionally, the bodies and what's on their personal inventory. It's also worth noting that you're not just looting the enemy NPCs, because the friendly security guards that are there and if dead um, are game for being looted as well. Now, eventually, we may see that items are marked stolen or something, uh, but for now, it's basically a fun and free way to get some free stuff. So going back to that bunker mission, the problem you have is that even with a backpack, you're not really going to be carrying a lot of armor, and that's some good stuff to pull and have in reserve should you need it, or potentially just to load up on a larger ship so if you've got friends on and if they need some armor, they can grab it when they need it. So there's a few approaches to getting a lot of loot out in the timeliest manner. In general, bringing a multi-tool with the tractor beam attachment is a helpful way to move bodies without the slow physical dragging. But regardless of how you do it, you want to move the bodies you plan to loot either to the uh, elevator or the bunker. So you can get them closer to your ship and you're not waiting on the elevator ride up and down a bunch of times. Now, if there is an armor that I'm really looking for, what I'll generally do is just throw all the guns that I want on the elevator. And then once done and my backpack is filled, I'll go to my ship, I'll empty my stuff into inventory, go back to the elevator, grab long arms and pistols until loaded, then go back and deposit, rinse, and repeat. So if you're planning to load the bodies to steal the armor, though, there are really two approaches to consider. The first is to load them onto your ship, which does come with the kind of gotcha or catch there that once bad guys are on your ship, even dead ones, the turrets are going to start opening fire thinking that you're, you know, carrying hostiles along, which means that you either need to load quick and get out, or you need to kill the turrets before you even start this endeavor. The other option, which is kind of crazy and best suited to having a med bed or a med gun, is to just get naked, run to the elevator, load up in armor, and then come back. That's dangerous, because depending on the location, you're either suffocating, burning, or freezing. So you will take some damage unless you're in kind of an idealistic place. 
So playing that game is dependent on the situation that you're in. I have heard, and I've had it work once, and not work three times, so I've kind of stopped trying, is to drag the bodies right under the nose of your ship, and you can interact with the ship inventory from there to load um, off without actually getting the bodies onto your ship and getting some angry turrets involved. Play with it, see if you can find a good way for it to work, but for me, it's been a miss more than it's been a hit. Now, an org mate that you might remember from the piracy video, kind of the panel discussion not long ago, uh, was Zane. And he shared an interesting option, which is essentially working as a minimum of team of two. And which means that you're bringing two ships down with one that you're intending to destroy. Um, what you would want to do is place something into the inventory of the ship. So once it's destroyed, a box is then created and the ship, um, you, you know, be that ship right there that you're using to destroy needs to be one that you can get out of quickly and run away from so you can survive the explosion. What that does is yield a fairly large box that you can interact with and move via the tractor beam, which gives you something actually capable of carrying armor so you're not dealing with the loading up and down the elevator and onto a ship. The box is also fairly easy to move around, so getting it through the bunker to load up at the targets instead of moving the targets is a little bit faster. So I like the approach. Uh, I do think it saves time, but it is dependent on you having a friend with a second ship, not caring about losing your ship, and having the right gear to make it all work. Now, a few other tips to help, uh, with the first being that on servers that are working well, bunker missions are much harder than they were before, and NPCs are smarter and they spawn in different locations, meaning that you, the chances of you getting hurt or dying right now are kind of real options. Uh, ships like the Carrick and the 890 both have very large inventories and medical beds you can respawn to and heal at, so they are excellent support ships for looting mission types. Um, they also have big shields and high HP to ensure that they can withstand the turrets if they decide to open up on you, and they can deal enough damage to take them out if you need to. Um, I also suggest that you always carry a hacking card with you because on servers that are not working well or just in the heat of the moment, you may end up killing a security person, get a crime stat 3, the turrets will then blow up your ship, so then, you know, being able to clear your name or clear your name is going to help prevent you from going to Clesher. Um, that happened to me a few nights ago when a security guard and an enemy ended up occupying the same space, and my P6 round went through both of them, um, so I went to Clesher. Uh, I would also say it's worth carrying a suppressor on your guns because it's going to alert less of the body or less of the NPCs to come and find you. Uh, if turrets are a big concern for you, using a vehicle like an Ursa can hold a fair amount of bodies for looting without really being in the line of fire of the turrets, so it's something else to consider. It's also worth reminding that inventory is everywhere. You know, you loot from inventory, you put it on your personal inventory, uh, you know, in your armor or your backpack. From there, you then put it on your ship, and eventually from there to a station that you see fit. What I would suggest with this is you move the, lo the loot to the next secure place up the chain as you get stuff, and then you outfit it where you need it with what you need and when. For example... When I go looting, I throw stuff into my ship inventory, I go to Everest and throw it all in there. That inventory is then safe while, you know, when it's in a ship or a vehicle or a body, those can all be killed and looted from. So when I go and do an FPS mission, I pull up my inventory when I get into my ship, I drag the items in the inventory system from Everest into the ship with what I consider to be mission critical, and that means it's a safe approach to build your locker of goods. Overall, there's been a little bit of drama about cash items and looting and whatnot, but the gameplay of looting is fun, it's new, and can get you some cool new stuff, even without targeting players. So understanding how it works is important and can take you a long way. So anyways, that's it for this video. If you guys have questions, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.